Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, Gimpy, and I'm here with something a little new for you guys. I haven't uh, done before. It's actually been on my shelf for a hot minute, and I've got it down to the table and tried it and put it back up. Got it back down to the table and tried it and put it back up. So yeah, this this is deep. This is Enemy Action Ardennes by or Arden by Compass Games. This is the German solo setup, and you can think of this game as like three games in one, all right? So you've got the German solo, you've got the Allied solo, and you've got the actual two player. And there's a, a map for each version. Uh, before we get started into everything, usual spill, make sure you take and check out uh, my giveaway that I've got going on. I'll be doing that here very soon. So make sure you take and enter for your chance to win. And uh, my little boy is doing better. Uh, test results came back looking positive, so everything's uh, looking upbeat as far as that's concerned so i do appreciate the prayers and best wishes that you guys have sent my way as far as all that's concerned mrs gimpy appreciates that as well anyway uh the past little bit i've been in the mood for uh, a meaty hex encounter war game you know and i was trying to figure out which one i was going to do you know something deep something complex something like just and it will be like a taco inside a taco within a Taco Bell that's inside a KFC within a mall that's inside your drive! And now that, uh, you know, I was thinking about it, I decided to go with uh, this. I had been thinking, you know, D-Day at Omaha, this one. Uh, I do have that uh, other new Compass Games one. What's the name of it? Uh, Battle Him. Uh, volume one. I'm gonna give that one a, a shot here soon. It looks like it uh, will play very well solo because of the chip draw mechanic, which is actually very heavy in this one as well. But this one has so many high reviews, and I do like the game from uh, the times I've played it before. It's just a very complex game. This is a heavy, heavy game. All right, I'm I'm just telling you flat honest God's truth. Let's see. Let, this is. The rule book just for the German solo, right? You've got three rule books in this uh, game, and the German solo rule book goes to 67 pages, okay? And it's all rules in there. <laughs> this is a, a deep game uh, that's involved. So if you want to play the, the German solo version and then the Allied solo version, you're going to have to take and read that Allied solo version of the rules. Because while, yes, they're going to operate on a similar principle as far as the game's concerned, you're, the rules are going to be different. So you're going to have to understand both of them. They are two separate games. I will say, personal opinion, I think the game is a little high-priced for what it is. Generally speaking, you're going to pay at least 90 at a minimum. Uh, usually I see it north of 100 on the normal, up to 120 Uh I think they charge so much just because the game is three games in one, but most people who get enemy action are dense. It, they get it and deal with it. <laughs> I say are dense. I, I can't stop myself from doing it. They get it for the solo game because it is such a deep and rich solo experience. And John Butterfield, the guy who designed the game, is known for you know doing good work. He has an excellent, excellent chit draw mechanic that operates in this game that you guys will see here in a little bit and the, the way the command cards and the action cards work so well together because it's it's a card driven solo game with chip pull mechanics just everything interwoven into it and it it really does a good job i gotta say that it is good but it is deep and you have to keep track of it and it is very easy to make a mistake in this game all right so i'm gonna put that one out there right off the bat I will screw something up at some point. I don't think you can play this game without making a mistake unless you've played nothing but this game for, for months on end. I will say, uh, before we get uh, any farther in it, I know I haven't gotten up another uh, turn of Heroes of Nam in a little bit. It's just because I have been working so hard on the rule book, the video bootcamp series. And when you're immersed in one game all day, when you're taking a break from that, you don't want to go play that game. You know, you want to take a break from that. But I still have that game set up. I will be finishing off uh, Heroes of Nam here soon uh, when I get a chance. I did get held up this week. So. But 
Uh, we'll see. Where are we going to start? There's just there's so much I want to cover as far as this game is concerned that it's like, where do you start when you're explaining it? Um, I will say I'm not going to play through all of it. There's there's no way I can play through a whole campaign of this game uh, in any reasonable length of time, not with the other stuff I've got going on, but I will play through a few days, turns. Uh, this is It's an impulse turn system. Uh, you do impulses off your cards until you're out of cards and then that constitutes the day which will turn over into refreshing your cards and then you'll take and continue on and that's what our track is up there uh let's see what do we want to start with i'll tell you what let me take and zoom in up here into our northern block that has our days listed on it and i'll show you guys what's up there and then we'll go over the cards and then we'll start showing uh all the units and how that works Okay, so when you're setting up the game, you're gonna take and set up your calendar. That's what this whole thing is up here. Let me set my light a little ways out of the way so I can get to it. Uh, all these different stacks of units are units that are gonna come in at different points in the game. Now I've got all the units set out just for ease because I don't know how far I'm gonna play into it, but I'm not necessarily gonna need them. I'm more than likely gonna need the first like couple of days just depending on how far we play it out but you can see how many units actually get involved now all the units that have a beige or a green main color on them not the stripe here at the top uh, those units are going to be your allied units now the units that have a gray-ish look as far as the main color on them, those are the German units that are gonna get added and the way this system is uh, set up is that as you hit these days these units are going to be brought down into your reserve box which is down below where we're looking here and then they're going to take and be eligible through card play to be placed out onto the map in specific locations you can't just place them out wherever you do have a, a set of methods to take and get them uh, onto the board i'll take and uh, show you guys how that's going to work it is pretty ingenious uh, for you, like they give you restrictions on where you're going to place your own units, and it's similar as far as the allied units on where you're going to place those. It's like they need to be placed under X, Y, and Z conditions on these types of hexes, and you'll take and go down that list to figure out where they're going to be placed optimally on the map. It, it's hard to explain when you're just looking at it, but you'll take and divide all these out. I'll take, I did uh, get the images for the game, so I'll throw one in the corner. You can see this number on the right of the symbol of the counter that it's a two digit, uh, blah, 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 two digit number 16 through 29 and that's the day that the counter is going to be available to come into play. Now that's not the day that you get to throw it on the map. That's the day it comes into the reserves and then you have to play an uh, action card, uh, command card to take and get it onto the board. However, you can take and wait. There is a, a rule about if it's two days past, they go ahead and come in. So basically, if you haven't spent the command to take and go ahead and get them onto the board and you're lagging behind, it's like uh, delayed reserves, I think is what they call it. Uh, they'll take and just come onto the board naturally at that point. So the system works uh, very well. There is a little bit of errata there at the beginning of uh, the rule book as far as a few of the counters that were probably misprinted in the game and some of them that are listed to come here on the calendar actually go onto the board and some that were supposed to be on the board go into the reserves box but it's uh, it's nothing too major as far as that's concerned so as far as setup is concerned for this game it's really relatively easy all right it looks complex but all the counters have either the hex or the day that they go into. So if they don't have a hex on the board that they're going into, then they have a day that they're going onto, and then you just have to put them on that. Also on our calendar is listed down uh, your command values, your, your draw values, and we're gonna touch on the cards here in a sec, but just understand that it's gonna be listed there what the amount of cards that you're gonna have, and then the allied uh, command value uh, rating. I forget what the, the specific term is called. Let's see. Allied command level. And that's, how do I explain it? 
it's how many cards you get to play, how much point value of cards you get to play before your impulse ends. And then the ally, the AI gets a turn at that point, and then that flips back and forth. Now, the first day, there are some uh, exceptions, which you guys will see. They have a lot of special rules as far as uh, German units, where they can move, uh, the fact that they can't move on the first impulse, actually. Um, a lot of restrictions uh, as far as crossing bridges, attacks, all that type stuff, uh, which you guys will see on the first turn. And then from turn 17 on, uh, it goes into a pretty normal turn structure. But let's take and back the camera back out so you guys can see this and I'll kind of touch on how the cards work. Okay, so like I said, this game is a card driven game, okay? So you're gonna have a deck of cards I've got my first hand here drawn and ready to go. And I start with nine cards on my first turn instead of whatever my hand value is supposed to be. It actually goes to six uh, after that. So I start with three extra cards. And these cards are going to vary. I should have the, uh, the card images to throw up in the corner, but just in case I don't, I'll take and hold them out here. And let's see if I have a couple of examples here. All right. This is a division card, one that has your core, your army that you're attached to, and then your core color below it just in a small stripe, okay? So your army, whatever it's listed down, like this is the 6th Panzer Army directly here across the top, that is going to be associated with the stripes along the side of the board here. And it's like that for the Allies on the far side of the board and the Germans on this side. So you have the 6th Panzer Army, they start here all the way north. Then you have the 5th Panzer Army, which overlaps a little bit into the 6th and overlaps uh, a little into the 7th down to here. And then the 7th starts here and goes down. Now those colors on the counters themselves, the main color, like this is a 7th Army, 7th Panzer Army that grayish color here all of the seventh army german seventh army they're going to have that color they might have a different stripe and different numbers along here along the top but they're all going to have that color so that's how you can tell what army they belong to all the sixth army are going to have this dark color the seventh army are going to have this blue gray color and then the sixth army up here is going to have this grayish color then you're gonna have, like I said, your stripe there along the top, which will correlate to one of these colors, which don't match perfectly with the cards, but they match close enough that you can figure it out. Plus they've got the division and cores listed down on them so you can look at that. But like I was saying, a card that looks like this that has the army listed on the top with a thin stripe is a division card. So if you play one of these cards, you're going to be playing or manipulating the smallest section of units, a division, okay? And then you have your core cards, which look like this. So that's our first uh, SS Panzer uh, core, but this is a division of it. So either the 12th VG division or the third Fallschirmjäger division can be played off of this card. And then there's restrictions, which we'll get into uh, here in a little bit when you actually start playing. A core card, which extends the color all the way down here, you can activate everything that has that yellow stripe on it. All right, so the whole first uh, SS Panzer Corps instead of just a division of the Panzer Corps. And let me see if I can find a uh, army card real quick to use. Okay, here we go. And then you have cards that look like this. They'll say Army Group or Army Group B. And this is like your biggest bulk card. This is your special one. You can uh, do one really special thing or activate one core of your choice or, you know, special stuff like that, which you guys will see. Uh, oops, sorry, I'm bumping my camera here. Which you guys will see when we get uh, into the game itself. So that's how the cards work. I know I haven't gotten into... Uh, the very specifics of the cards and what's on them. We're going to get into that when we start playing. Just understand that the colors are what's deciding what you're activating. Okay, so your divisions, small color, your cores, big color, and then your army, 
biggest color. It's the same principle as far as the allied units are concerned. So when you draw a command card, they operate off of these decks down over here. You'll draw one command card for the allies if they have units there that the commands are applicable to and it's not like a no command or something which you guys will see when we start playing you'll take and start doing that and then you'll draw action cards to determine what they're going to do it's a it's not an overly cl uh, complex system but it is one that you really need to try to walk your way through it helps to watch somebody play it. Uh, i did watch someone uh, a few youtube videos myself to try to get the hang of it before i was getting into it because there is just so much going on to it and if you don't have any uh background military background and understand some of the uh, the breakdown as far as unit structure is concerned it could really blow your mind because it's a lot to take in all at once the thing is though it's a very elegant system once you get it once you understand it and once you're actually starting to really get into the game it's an outstanding way to do it because you just have to read down your card and go okay this makes sense yep 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 can i do this well no then i'm just going to do whatever's lower on the card and then your bottom of your card will give you um combat tactics that you can do we'll get into that but it adds special things and that's the neat thing about this game is like okay combat artillery you're not going to have artillery on the board per se right but say your units are an attack and they have an artillery tactic supporting them, well, that's gonna come into play when you're doing your chit draws, your combat chit draws for uh, your actual combat. And there's chits that'll say, okay, do you have artillery? Yes, okay, well, you get bonus hits and step losses against your opponent. Or if your opponent, you know, the defender has artillery and you don't, you might take more damage. And it works that way as far as like air power, flanking, and all the other different uh, combat tactics. Now, those don't just do things like add to your chit draws. They can affect the state of the board itself, uh, which you guys will see. You can do things uh, like what's called reinforced battle, which is the only way to move units on your first impulse of the German turn because you're not allowed to move any of them. You can attack, but you can't move unless you... Actually, I think I drew one. Let's see, did I draw one? Yeah, here we go. Uh, my sixth Panzer Army, the combat tactic down here is reinforced battle. Reinforced battles, basically, I can move a stack of units from somewhere on the board as long as they're proximate to the combat. And that's the thing is they, they had a lot of defined terms. Proximate in this game means that they can move there in one movement action. All right, so very similar to uh, other war games first number on the counter is your uh, combat factor right number is your movement factor so if you can get there in one impulse of movement you're considered proximate whether it's to your own units or the enemy units uh, it's how they do it but once you understand the definitions like that it really starts to become easy to figure out where things are going to go how the ai is going to operate where they're going to place new units and like i said I really like the game, but it is a complex game. It is a hard game. All right, it's it's not impossible to win uh, by any means, but it it will kick your butt the first uh, few times you're playing it, and that's a good thing. I mean, who wants to play a game like this where you know you can walk through it because you're not going to take and uh, want to play it if you just are going to win every time. You're sitting here really stewing over these cards going, okay, well, if I activate them, then I'm not going to be able to activate them on my next impulse. So I have to think, do I want to use them now? And then do I want to use a combat tactic? Because one thing I haven't touched on just yet is in the top left of these cards is a command value. And that's what I was talking about. You're going to spend so much command value before it uh, ends your impulse, the German impulse, and then you go to the Allies. For your very first impulse, you can spend, or you actually have to spend at least 10 command uh, command points. So you have to use 10 card, 10 points worth. So this card would be three, this one's three, two, 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 one, 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 two. So you, you have to use a combination of those that equal 10 or greater, because as Say you've spent nine up until that point, and then you activate, you spend some more cards, 
you can spend however many cards you want on that last activation at that point. You don't have to stop at 10. Uh, you guys will see it because I actually already figure out what I'm going to do for my first turn and I think it comes up to something like 12 or 13 uh, command points worth of uh, activation that I'm going to do. Like I said, the allies operate very similarly, uh, similar to uh, how that works. And you guys will see intuitive system, real cool. Uh, as you're moving through, it's potential to have allied units uh, jump into combat, you know, uh, what they call undetected defender, or for them to throw up roadblocks as you're moving through. And if you don't understand the brief history behind this, this is uh, the Battle of the Bulge, right? They're pushing through the Arden Forest and they caught the allies by surprise and the first turn the allies are caught flat-footed and then they start taking and uh, fighting back more severely that's why you get to kind of attack uh, unimpeded which you guys will see on the first uh, impulse when we get into it so what I'm gonna do is instead of trying to explain anymore because it's really hard to to show you and get you to understand everything just by talking about it and I've already blown so much time uh, gapping at this point. I'm just going to zoom in on the different parts of the map where I'm taking and activating units and then I'm going to walk you through on the cards of what the cards mean and what these specific units are doing and why I'm doing it. Now keep in mind, not an expert at the game by any means. This is not like the grade A awesomest strategy to win the game. This is just me putting together the combination cards I think is going to do well. But I will say if you're just curious about it right at this point, I do like the game. If you're looking for a hex encounter tactical solo game set in World War II that plays back at you and has unique mechanics and the fact that it has a card driven system and a chip pull uh, system for combat, you are not rolling dice for this at all. All right. You roll dice very rarely for things like roadblock checks. That's, that's pretty much it. You're not rolling dice very often in this game at all. You're pulling, uh, actually I didn't even show you guys this yet, my little crappy blue ball. There's uh, 60 some of these little chits in here. You're pulling these and we'll go over this because this is, this is in depth. So this is your dice. So imagine having a 60 sided dice that can account for things like artillery and air power and flanking and infiltration and combined arms of uh, mechanized and uh, infantry combat that's the type of dice that you have in this. John Butterfield nailed this game. It's difficult, all right? It's complex to learn, but once you learn it, you are treated to one hell of an experience. Uh, before I go any farther, I will comment on something that Mr. Uh, Derek Case pointed out in the single-handed warfare. These are the white core counters. And I like white core counters. They don't bother me, right? Uh, GMT uses them, Compass Games uses them. I will say he is correct in his assessment that these are thin counters and the card stock is a little thin as well. And I agree with his assessment for the cost of the game, the counters could have been a little thicker. White core or not, they could have been a little thicker, cards could have been a little thicker. Don't let that stop you from an excellent game experience though. The, the counters being a little thin, it's not a problem. Every war gamer has a pair of tweezers. They pick right up, okay? Other than that, no problems as far as component quality is concerned. Uh, the maps are fine. No big issue as far as back folding is concerned. I keep mine in a poster frame anyway. Uh, so as far as components, yes, he's right. They're thin cards and counters, but not overly so, and definitely not so thin that you should not experience a wonderful game like this. Definitely uh, get it if you're looking for one like this. All right, so... Let me take and pan down to our first groups that are getting ready to uh, activate and I'll show you which cards we're using, why we're using them, and how they're going to affect the different units and what all of this uh, other stuff means. All right, let's take and get started here. Uh, I do wanna say uh, I had to break for a few minutes. Um, sorry if it sounds a little roary in the background. It started raining at my house. Um, you guys might not see this because if the mic is picking up too much of the rain, I might have to just take and refill it. So uh, I'll have to see how that pans out. Before we get started, I wanted to show you guys this little player aid real quick. I like how they have this set up. Uh, I'm getting ready to show you guys 
but the way this is broken down is in primary cards and supplemental cards and they're going to interplay depending on the date on the card you're going to start with day 16 cards you know shown here and then you'll add in extra cards uh, depending on how far you are along into the, the actual campaign and you're not going to have access to all the supplemental cards you'll have every turn you're going to have access to your primaries right and your primaries actually i'll show you guys here in a second when we pan down uh they have a black stripe across the bottom that says primary so each day you're going to have all your primary cards but each day you're not going to have all your supplemental cards you'll take and as you discard them they'll go here and then on the end of the day they'll come over here and then your previous available supplemental cards will be shuffled in so there's kind of like a little rotation that uh, that happens with it so you're not going to have access to all of your cards each day as you add in uh, new cards to it and let's take and zoom down to the board itself and i'll walk through uh this first set of attacks and show you guys how this works all right let's zoom in just a little bit okay I am going to take and do this attack right here. This is part of the uh, 5th Panzer Army, the 116th Panzer of the, let's see if I can read that right, is that 48th Corps? I want to say my Roman numerals, numerals aren't perfect. So let's lay down the cards that I'm using to do this, okay? This is, oh, I'm so zoomed in, this is my card to activate them, okay? I'll put it up in the, uh, the corner of the screen, but it lists down all the different actions you can do with it, and these cards are used in both. So if it has an arrow, it can be used, and if it has a G, it can be used. A means it's used in the allied game, so those actions wouldn't be used in this. I'm using this to activate the 116th Panzer or you know whatever division but i'm using it to activate that division so the one the counters that have that symbol i'll take and put it up in the corner of the screen for you can be activated off of this card and it's a division card you can tell because it's got the small stripe so i can't activate the whole core whole core being all the ones that have that blue stripe so right now i can only activate this stack of guys right here there's three counters that are part of the 116th uh, Panzers of the 48th, 47th, whatever core it is. And I'm also adding to it this card, which I am not playing for anything north of this line. I'm playing it for its secondary effect, Assault Coordination, all right? That adds a combat tactic that allows adjacent units that are not activated, which since I'm activating this stack to attack this allied unit, this unit can take an attack as well, even though they're not technically being activated by the card that I'm using. And there's a lot of different uh, tactics like that that can take and be used in this game. Um, ones that will allow you to move other stacks or count units as flanking when they're not flanking. Uh, a whole bunch of different little things that uh, you guys will see. So we take and lay down our cards here see if that's still in camera. Oh, I'm so zoomed in. Let me move my camera over a little bit. Okay, so these are my two cards that I'm using in this attack. And you can see this allied unit has this counter on top of it. And this is, um, like I said, I'm not great with, uh, with uh, nomenclature for the units, just bear with me. Uh, what is that? The 28th division of the 8th Corps, 8th Army, something like that allied unit. Now this counter that's on it means that they have an improved position. And what that effectively does is it gives them one extra step effectively. So when they start taking damage, this improved position comes off. It means they've built like earthen works and barricades and sandbags and stuff before they've uh, been attacked. And a lot of these allied units start with this uh, improved position and the other side's the German improved position on them uh, at the start of this sixth, uh, day 16 turn because they, uh, you know, had dug in, you know, at this point. Now, like I said previously, this game is not a dice rolling game. This is a chit draw game. Now, this is where it can start getting confusing. You are going to take and draw chips 
uh, chits out of your little cup here. And it's going to depend on a lot of different factors on how many you can draw. Now, I saw a guy who had taken and filmed this game previously and his little technique for figuring this stuff out, I've really liked and I've adapted it for myself. And what you do is you take to figure out your minimum draw, because you have a minimum and a, a maximum amount of these chips that you're gonna draw. Your minimum is how many steps of defenders are in the hex. So we have a two step unit. So that's two steps where we're at right now. And he would use a dice to take and annotate that. And there's a lot of other different factors that are listed down on our player aid here, which we're not gonna go through everything. And it starts down here at the bottom that take and add in more. You get more uh, chip, uh, chip draws based on how many units you have attacking. So I have four units attacking, so that's up to four more. So we're at six right now, plus one for each combat tactic, plus one for elite units, plus one for each attacking unit with three or four steps, plus one if the defender's out of supply, plus two if the defender's isolated, minus two if the defender played a screen tactic. Now, normally, during, before we start this step, the you would draw an allied command card to see if they had a tactic or an undetected defender. You do not do that on this first impulse of day 16, because like I said, you're catching the allied uh, units flat-footed. You're catching them by surprise, so they're not getting any tactics on this first round of combat, so it behooves you to get as much uh, action in as possible. Now, like I said, we need to take and spend 10 points worth of attacks. And I've got it figured out so I can take and get in four attacks during this first turn because I want to get as many shots off as I can. This top left number on the cards is the command point value. I meant to mention that earlier uh, that I'm spending. So I'm spending two command points of the 10 that I have to spend this impulse. And like I said, the uh, 16 up in the top right is just the date of uh, the card on when it's available. So we spent two points to get this division activated and to give them assault. So these guys are activated. Now, like I was saying, we have four units and we're getting a plus one for elite, which this 116th Panzer, they have red step markers. Those are those red dots to the left. If it's uh, black, they're normal, red, elite, and white means uh, uh, noob. <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Green, rookie. Noob. Oh, I'm using old gamer terms. I don't think any of the others apply for us. We don't have any three or four step units. They're not out of supply. Oh, I am getting plus one for a combat tactic plate. So see, that's plus four, plus two, so six. So I can draw a total of eight chits. Now, the way this works is you're going to take and draw your first defender chits automatically. All right, so two, and then we get to choose how many of the rest that we're gonna draw. So we'll draw up to six more, but I have to say how many I'm going to draw before I start drawing them up to that limit. And keep in mind that seven or more is considered a large attack, which is good for you. So I'd wanna at least draw seven. I'm gonna do the whole eight just so I have a whole bunch uh, for you guys to see. Now, something else I saw this guy do, I'll take in, um, link him in the description because I liked his videos and I don't think he he's active anymore but at least you guys should check it out um, was to use a dice to figure out the combat odds and keep track of that let's see I've got a three three what is this other one four so it's 10 14 oh if I had one more I'd have five to one I've got four to one I don't think I can get any more on this unfortunately so I will take my red dice here, and if I can find my four, set it down next to this. So I've got four to one odds against the defenders in an assault coordinated attack, so I'm considered to be flanking them even though I'm not flanking them, and we have up to eight chit draws, okay? So let's take and start drawing our uh, combat chits for this, and you guys can see how this is gonna work. Let me take and kind of throw them over here to the left, so we'll be out of the way for our attack. All right, so our first two is one and two. Now, let me see if the camera zoomed in enough. Yeah, you guys can see that. Okay, 
we have uh, let's see greater than eight to one odds we don't so now you check the other side are we greater or equal to four to one yes so if it applies you leave it you keep it so this is going to count for us d1 means they're taking one hit good okay i would have liked to have had the negative for myself but i don't are they dispersed or unsupplied no so we're going to flip it again is the defender adjacent i don't get this one let's see what this is hold on let me look this up real quick because of course the defender's adjacent they're always i think this is is there another defender oh i get it if they have like another you guys uh, correct me on uh, this if i'm wrong because i looked this up before and i didn't think this uh applied the way that it, i'm thinking but i'm thinking this is if they have other units adjacent to them besides the ones that we're attacking you guys let me know if i'm uh right on that one so if this one was accurate they would take and cause a hit to us that's what the a1 and d minus one means they would lose a hit so this is not going to apply for us so right now they have just one hit applied to them and we can draw up to six more combat shits in this attack i'm going to go ahead and draw all six of them out of my little cup here there are let's see if i grab one out if we draw one of these neat little blue ones here the blue ones signify a refreshing of your uh, cup and if you draw that any that have been drawn out previously go back into the cup so do keep that in mind it's not going to affect us on this first attack since we don't have any that have been drawn out yet and that would be like immediately they go back in the cup like right then not including the ones that we've drawn you guys will see that because i'll start drawing some here in a little bit after i've done some attacks so here we go one two three four let's see what was that four five and six okay so we've got six chips out here and we're just going to go through them and see what the attacks are you always check your first side uh this is the same as the other one four to one which we do have and woods or forest nope that is broken terrain so that's not going to help them clear nope so that's not going to help them is this greater than or equal to five to one no uh greater than or equal three to one yes and see we're actually taking a hit as well i hate that i don't want to take hits Let's see what is this defender is elite no defender green no so that's not going to affect us come on i need one more hit to kill these little bug nuts off large attack yes this is a large attack that's what i was talking about with having at least seven of these chips being drawn to take and el eliminate these guys that just gave me what i needed now this last one is city nope it is not a city and town forest or woods nope it is not a town forest or woods so these ones that i have drawn they stay out of the cup until i draw another blue uh, combat chip and when i do that i'm gonna keep calling them chips you guys just deal with it when i do that all of these that have been drawn and set to the side they will immediately go back in the cup and be open to be drawn at that point so the totality of this attack is four hits on the defender and one hit on us now you're supposed to do the attacker um first or no which one is it Think you do to the defender first and go back to the attacker but i like to make sure i hit mine because if i don't i'll forget to do it uh let's see i don't want to put the hit on my elite tanks so i'm going to take a step loss on these guys over to the side because i do not want my tanks being worn down now that leaves us four to put onto these guys the first one is going to take off their improved position so that takes care of one of these hits now they have three more to go so they're gonna take and there's a whole little thing about retreating and taking oh no i needed one more because they had an improved position uh that effectively gave them more they have to retreat up to twice there's actually a little thing in our player aid here let me flip to it so i can show you guys assigning hits to defending units and it's like if the defending unit has already retreated two hex in this combat lose a step for each remaining hit uh, not yet applied so they have to retreat up to twice 
and then start taking step losses basically. So these little blue arrows on the map show the primary uh, direction they want to retreat in. So they're going to retreat this direction and then they're going to retreat this direction. That takes care of two of the step losses and now they've got one left. They'll flip over into this and you can actually see that they have a bracket around their combat factor now and this signifies the fact that they no longer exert a uh, area of control. They're, uh, I'm blanking out on what the hell you call it. <laughs> Look at this shit. Uh, basically all the six X's around them no longer count as their control and I can move by them or my supply lines can be traced by them now they don't have their little area of control. So that takes care of our four hits against them. And mechanized units take and follow up against them up to two hexes. So I will take and follow. Now we have to take, since there's a bridge here, and do a bridge check to take and see if the bridge is destroyed which if I remember right, oh, this is what I'm talking about. The game is so deep, you, I can't keep track of every single little rule. I think I'm right on this. I'll read it up later to make sure I'm 100% right, but I don't feel like digging in the rule book right now. I think it's you take and read here to see if the uh, you roll. No, the bridge check is uh, one or two, and the roll, uh, roadblock is um, this number. So we're going to have to check for a roadblock and the bridge destruction. Let's see if the bridge is destroyed. Oh, the bridge is destroyed. Little butt nuggets. Okay, so we will put a bridge destroyed icon right here. Now, I could follow up one hex in there, but I would have to be checking for a roadblock, which I'm going to go ahead and check for a roadblock anyway because I am adjacent. And that's what this symbol means, this position. So it has to be greater than that for them to have not left a roadblock behind. And you're always going to check that when you become adjacent to these positions, which is that uh, orange circle with a number in it. And you roll a D6 or a D10 and see if it has a, um, see if you're, you're beating it. So come on. Okay. They did not leave a roadblock into that. And you'll check that uh, once per impulse. So let's back up a little bit. Now, like I said, normally I could take and follow them up one more hex into this hex as well. And I don't think I want to do that because since that bridge is blown, I could only send one unit across. And I don't want to send just one unit yet. I'm probably just going to leave them there for now and I'll worry about possibly trying to rebuild that bridge or move across at a later point. Uh, let me look real quick. I think they become uh, dispersed as well. Let's see. Steps. Calculate. Hold chance. Let's see. Not yet dispersed. Disperse. All right, let me check it real quick because I don't want you guys having to wait on me looking. Okay, we're back. Yes, the general procedure is you're taking and if they retreat two hexes, it's up here in your uh, hits and step losses, they do become dispersed. So that is what this counter here represents. And we'll get into that more here in a little bit. Uh, but for the general purposes, it's similar to things like uh, Shaken, where it affects their zones of, zones of control. There I am. Uh, affects their zones of control and then uh, not being able to put it out makes them weaker in combat, uh, things of that nature. So you guys can see the basic principle of how combat's going to work in this. You're going to select through your card play what units you're going to activate and what combat tactics you're potentially adding to them. And you really have to be strategic about those cards because, all right, do I want to activate, use this card rather for the units that are on it? Or do I want to use this card for the combat tactic to make another attack more effective? And that really gets uh, sticky when you have some of your big cards, like your army group cards, which give you the ability to use like any tactic and you don't have to wait for a specific card. You can just take and pick, I want to use this tactic or I want to activate this specific unit or I want to do, you know, whatever it is. And it gives you uh, a lot of strategy 
but then you know you can take and use one of those army cards to activate any core you know all right so what i do for my memory purposes uh after i've done this is i take and use my goofy little damn yellow beads grab a few out because the rule in this game is that once you activate a core division whatever it is on an impulse you cannot activate it again in the following impulse there has to be a break in between that so once i get done with this 10 um, combat value or 10 command value impulse i need to take and activate different units on my next impulse from the ones I'm activating on this first one. So you can't just sit there and have your one really strong beefed up SS Panzer division and just have them steamrolling turn after turn after turn to try to make a big hole in the line. You have to take and kind of uh, spread your strategy out along uh, your lines to your different troops. So these guys are activated. This would just reminds me hey i've done these guys on this impulse the next impulse i'm not going to do those guys i'll take and do other guys and then at the end of that impulse i'll pull those off and put on ones for whatever i've activated at that point uh, that's the short version of how combat works it's not overly difficult once you've uh, played a few rounds of it for me the biggest issue i guess is keeping track in my mind okay what do I need to do, like uh, as far as bridges are concerned, you know, and then hold positions, which again are those orange numbers in the center of the different hexes. Uh, are they leaving roadblocks? Roadblocks is something that just, uh, it's a hard one for me for some reason to keep in my mind. There's so many, I don't want to say overly fiddly because it's not overly fiddly, but there are some fiddly rules in the game, but it adds chrome, it adds depth to it. All right, it, it really makes it dynamic where you're like, okay, I can't do this, but I can do, how can I squeeze this out? And it's not like a min-maxing thing. It's You're just trying to work your strategy as best as you can to make holes in this line as you're pushing through to get over here to the Muse River, to get to these victory point hexes, to get to hexes that have fuel markers in them because fuel becomes an issue just like it was in real life. Uh, later into uh, the, uh, the month, fuel becomes an issue and some of your mechanized units won't be able to take and move unless you have picked up fuel counters that you can take and uh, activate those units with. So there's a lot going on to it, but there's a lot that is easy to miss if you haven't like really got a hold on this game. And I know there's, there's some little fiddly stuff that I'm going to miss along the way. It, it's just the nature of the beast. But in my opinion, if you're looking for a hex encounter solo game, you know that plays back at you it's hard to beat this game especially with uh, the outstanding card draw play or the card play rather and the chit draw mechanic both work so well i love not rolling dice and I, I like dice you know i love rolling dice for my combat odds but the way these chits work as far as the combat's concerned you can never plan everything down to a t because you don't know which one of those chits you're gonna draw when you're actually making your attack. You can have a small, uncoordinated, just few stack unit, get lucky on their chit draws and blow the guys out. Or you can have the biggest odds in your favor and think, ah, there's no way they can survive. And the chits just don't go in your favor and they get some good combat tactics. And then all of a sudden you get pushed back and you're like, what the hell's going on? It really adds a lot of depth to it. It's like I said earlier in the video, it is effectively a 60 sided dice that could be one of so many different damn things uh, on it that gets used up as you roll it and then every now and then the dice refreshes itself but you don't know when the dice is actually going to refresh itself so uh, yo, i love it i love the game it's just so damn complex i mean it's to me, in my opinion, I put it up there with Fields of Fire. I would say Fields of Fire is actually a little more complex than this one, but it's up there in that category, but it's worth the investment. I mean, just like Fields of Fire is worth the investment of the time and the, the headache of trying to get your mind wrapped around it. But when it clicks, it, it's an experience like no other. Uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and stop the video here 
And what I'm gonna do is play out the rest of the turn. There are some special rules that are still in effect for the rest of day 16, like German traffic jams, which no matter if there's a bridge or not, you can only cross one unit across it. Uh, the rest of this impulse, I still can't move units unless I'm using a reinforced battle, which I'm actually gonna use here on this purple core because uh, there is a attack I kind of figured out that I can do where I can swing some of these guys up and over to get a big attack because they're all having, for the most part, to attack across this river. And when you're attacking across a river, you have to take and have your, uh, your combat values. So you have to sling a lot of lead across that river to try to get these guys. Uh, if it wasn't, when I was first figuring it out, I was like, oh, I'm going to have like something like 25 to three. And I was like, wait a minute. No, I got to have that shit. So this is going to be one of my main attacks. So we're going to do this one. And then I've got an attack I'm going to do here. And then I'm going to do up here. I think the, uh, the Fallschirmjäger and some Panzer divisions are going to take and get involved up there in those yellow units. Oh, outstanding game. I mean, really outstanding game. You guys, uh, I'll, I'll talk more about my opinions on it, but, uh, if you do have a chance to get it, if you see someone selling it on sale for a good price, definitely jump on it. Uh, you guys have heard me talk about him before. Chris over at NWS War Games, he has the best price that I've seen around, something like 80 some dollars, I think, for it. Uh, don't quote me on it for uh, Enemy Action Arden. But if you have the extra money lying around, you're looking for a solo game, uh, Gimpy absolutely recommends wholeheartedly uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut the video here we'll take and pick back up with the remainder of um, turn 16 or day 16 rather I keep saying turn 16 but day 16 and we'll see if I can make a bigger hole in the American lines which I've actually got a hole now because you're always tracing from one board edge to the other and you can't go through enemy zones of control so by pushing him back I created a gap here so there's actually a gap in their line which there are rules for it which they'll try to take and fill that with either reinforcements or moving troops over there but uh, you guys will see that here in a little bit you guys take care i will see you in the next one